What's up, guys? This is the GOAT cast season four, and this is the Mandalorian season three mid-season review. I'm going to try to give a number score for this season so far. It doesn't seem like, but we're halfway through, and I don't feel like a lot has happened. Well, a lot's happened, but I'm not sure where they're going with this season. That's pretty much my biggest takeaway so far, but... So uh, if you enjoy this, like and subscribe, and, uh, you know, it just helps me. I'm just doing this for fun, so it helps me along the way. So um, season three, I find uh, The Mandalorian has a kind of a trend where the first couple of episodes will be cool little mini episodes, but nothing big happens, and then they kind of ramp it up, um, like episode five. And onward, I felt like they did that definitely in season two. Season two, it started to really pick up mid-season. And um, season one, I believe, so i got to go back and rewatch it. But season one, I think it kind of picked up because most of them were just little side quests he was kind of doing. And then he got into the meat and potatoes of um, his, uh, his mission or what that main storyline was and I feel like this one's playing out just like the other seasons where they've set up some, some little things but they're not quite sure where they're going where they're headed with it and uh so yeah so so far this season I feel like everything about Mando has been really short like last episode three a lot of people liked it I didn't hate it, but I didn't, it wasn't my favorite. I could have done without it. I think one of the reviewers said that it felt like two different shows. It felt like you had Man The Mandalorian and then you had an episode of something different, you know, intertwined into one episode. And I kind of feel like that because the stuff with the, the doctor and those, um, those uh I can't even think of the word, but the the they were coming over from the I guess the old empire um you know the remnants of the empire, and they're trying to be reestablished into the new republic so you know it it was what it was, I guess they're establishing that there's going to be some involvement from um i guess the uh what I, I guess will become the, the first order that we saw in the sequel trilogy. I really hope not because, I mean, I like Moff Gideon and I wouldn't mind them having one more real uh, uh, conflict with him. But if this is leading to them kind of showing the... the, the um, Showing how the first orders begins, I, I I like Mandalorian because I feel like it separates himself from the main Star Wars storylines, the Luke Skywalker. The even though we've had that crossover, um, I just feel like the universe, their galaxy, is too big for them to all be kind of intertwined like that. So, um, I mean, I understand the First Order is a big deal, and it is galaxy-wide, but to have Mando have, and the Mandalorian, and them have some crossover into that, I think I could do without, and I could live without, but if that's what they want to do, as long as they make it cool, I don't mind it. The, the, the common theme here, though, to me, this season is that the episodes are short, and you're trying you're waiting for that big moment of something happening and it's not quite hit yet i don't think uh no i i liked episode 1 but it was super short and it just really didn't it just reestablished mando being back and him trying to get back with his sect of the uh of mandalorians and i thought that was that would be the season's theme is him trying to get to Mandalore and bathe in the waters of Mandalore and, you know, redeem himself. But 
he did that in what the second episode third episode so we got fast track to that and i guess the story might be of bo katan you know becoming one of you know becoming an ally with him and his mandalorian sect and and maybe that leading to their partnership and them all being a happy family, something like that. I don't know. I hope there's not a romance, but you never know. Uh, he did, uh, I think it was season one when they were on that one uh, planet with the at He did kind of have a little fling or something going on with the girl in that episode. So, you know, Mando, he's, he's a man, so... He has those <laughs> desires and those urges, but I could live without that as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm really curious as to where this season goes. But so far this season, I've been slightly underwhelmed. Uh, I know we're happy to have new Star Wars, and The Mandalorian has really been a hit for most Star Wars fans, but... I think the season is showing some of the imperfections that they have. We get a lot of creature features in Mandalorian. From season one, two, and three, you got a lot of episodes where they're fighting some creature. Even in the Book of Boba Fett, we start out with that. And I I feel like that's they're going to that well way too many times. Whereas we could get some conflict with other alien creatures other than big beasts and dinosaurs and crocodiles and turtles and spiders and all that other stuff i feel like we could really get some some one-on-one action with some other characters um i thought it was cool with the pirate stuff so i figured they would factor in sometime um at some point but that hasn't happened yet. And of course we have, we had TIE fighters. So I guess that those remnants of the empire of Moff Gideon's people are still out there. And, and I, like I said, I'm trying to figure out what their role is going to be. And, and, uh, you know, maybe he sent Moff Gideon sent them to take down, uh, Bo-Katan's planet. I don't know. Uh, I'm still kind of, and maybe if if they've explained it and I just didn't, I, I missed that. Can you guys put that in the comment section and let me know um, about that? Because I'm really, really confused <laughs> as far as, you know, why that attack happened. And yeah, so, I mean, this season has had action it's had adventure, but it just hasn't had the story that I'm looking for. It and it's becoming kind of. I think I haven't watched Andor yet, so let me know in the comment section or whatever um, if I should watch Andor because um, I've heard a lot of good things, but I just haven't got a, around to, to watching it. Um, but this goes back to Obi Wan. Book of Boba Fett. Um, those are ones that I've I've got into and thought they were going to be amazing, and they all just kind of I don't know. They just didn't hit as far as the storylines, and yeah, it led up to big fights and you know big uh, moments towards the end, and and introduce characters that uh, we love to see Cad Bane and Luke. And uh, as far as Obi-Wan, we got to see the rematch between Obi-Wan and Darth Vader. And and we did get a glimpse of Luke in that and uh, Leia, but it just, some of the story was just, just didn't hit. And I feel like this is falling into that trap as well. It's just not hitting like, and I think the newness of the Mandalorian from season one and two is kind of uh, fading because I feel like we've seen enough of his 
you know, him taking down monsters and, you know, whatever else, that we need some more. We need something more. Which is why I didn't mind, even though episode three to me was a little too long as far as following those two characters, I felt like we needed that difference. You know, I know it's supposed to be like a spaghetti western, but we needed that difference to kind of give it like, okay, this is a new season. This is some new things happening to keep it fresh. And I don't think episode four was, I thought the flashback scene was great. Uh, that was really cool. And I had a feeling that's what, when, we, when I saw the trailer and they showed Jedi, I'm pretty sure that was a flashback to Order 66 and Grogu getting out of there. But <clears throat> with that aside, I want to see some follow-up to that because it's a cool scene, but what's it mean in the grand scheme of things? Is Baby Yoda traumatized is it going to affect you know how he progresses you know we did get a little, cool little scene where he challenged one of the other mandalorians young younglings if you will and he came up victorious so so yeah i mean i i hope that they fall through on all of this that it's just not a cool scene we get to see his 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 background, you know, what happened, and then you just forget about it. Let that play a part in his character development or his progression, and um, just just give us something. Just don't have cool scenes for the sake of just having cool scenes. Um, and with that said, just like in the Book of Boba Fett, the best episodes were the ones that didn't even involve Boba Fett. The two Mandalorian, basically two Mandalorian episodes, and uh, we need some more of that. We need some because we got to see him in another setting. I thought the opening scene of the first episode that way he came back, where he used the dark saber to uh, chop that uh, guy in half. I thought that was cool, and I, I like the setting. But we're getting too many of the same settings, the the desert settings, the you know, if you're going to make Star Wars small, then keep it small. If you're going to make it grand, do so. You know, if you're going to have Mando in just certain locations, don't bring in First Order and all these other things because they they shouldn't be involved in stuff on those planets for the most part. But if you're going to make it big, let him go some, to some other settings. Let him be adventurous let us see some other things let you know let us know what his mission is because right now we don't know and like i said i thought it was his redemption to becoming getting back with the sect but he's already accomplished that so what is his goal for season three and i heard a, in an interview or something where john favreau was saying that he doesn't have an end game for Mandalorian. So it's just whatever happens, happens. And that can work, but you have to have some fresh ideas too. You can't just do the same kind of trope of Mandalorian goes here, or Mando Din goes here, uh, struggles with some beast, finally figures out to beat him in the episode. You know, we need some more, we need some freshness to it. And seeing Coruscant and all that other stuff was cool when seeing, you know, the flashback with Order 66 and uh, this, um, the uh, clone troopers and the Jedi. It was cool. But we just need that to flow into a story that brings all of this together. And, uh, so far, I don't feel like they've... I feel like this season is pretty much a big mystery. It's... You don't really know where it's going yet. And I'm hoping... And I think that's how... That's kind of how last season went. But you knew his quest, his goal was to bring Grogu to a Jedi. Was to get him to... 
somebody to train him. So we, we knew we knew in season one from episode one kind of what the what the goal was throughout the season. We knew what he had to do in season two. Took him some twists and turns to get there, but kind of knew. This season, we don't know. And I think that that's why, that's kind of why I feel it's a little underwhelming because I don't know what's happening. I don't know where they're going with this. And I'm assuming it's him having to showdown with Moff Gideon again or somebody from that faction. But I just don't know. And maybe Bo Katan turns on him. You know, maybe she's an inside something. I don't know. Maybe that was the whole purpose of the episode three um, with the Coruscant sub showing how somebody can set somebody up to be, you know, can turn their back on them and set them up. So maybe all of this is, but it doesn't seem like that. Or maybe they're going to have a showdown with the Mythosaur, but I'm kind of tired of the creature features on these because I feel like that's something they go to so much since season one. They keep going back to these creatures that they have to take down. And, you know, her mentioning the Mythosaur at the end of episode four, I don't know if that'll lead to them going to hunt that or or what. I don't know, but I guess maybe she can do that and become the new leader of uh, that sect. Um, maybe so. Maybe she'll reunite with the night owls. I don't know. But to give this a, a, a number grade for right now out of 10, I'm giving it a strong six because I I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit torn on uh, on this season so far and I feel like it's just missing something and the episodes haven't quite been as satisfying as I wanted them to so I'm just hoping that all of this slow burn I guess in these little side quests are leading to some grand big and that's what happened in season 2 because I was not expecting what I saw in season 2 with Luke and all that so maybe this is building up to something big. I don't want them to keep going to the old uh, characters to to pop. I'm not going to say not pop a rating, but to kind of overshadow bad storytelling because everyone's so hyped that you see this character. And I feel like they kind of did that with um, Obi-Wan because the story wasn't all that great, but they pulled us in with the the thought of a rematch with Darth and uh, Obi-Wan and just that hunt down, even though some of the story didn't make sense and it wasn't that great, having that in their back pocket helped to really get fans excited about it. And I feel like if they're going to go to that and, you know, see uh, episode or uh, last episode of this season, they... You know, I don't know, Han Solo or somebody comes in to save Mando or to help Mando. I don't want to see that. And some parts of me thinks that Boba Fett may play a part at some point in this, which is cool because they've established that there's some connection there. So that would be fine. But I just don't want them to keep going to that every finale to you know just so you can forget about everything that happened just talk about that one big scene with whoever so yeah i'm giving a six out of ten and just i just hope it gets better um, um they're not they're fun episodes there's nothing terrible about them they're just not I'm just not getting the story right now and i want if it's not it seems like it's episodic because they recapped the last episode, so everything kind of flowed into the next one. So it's got to be considered episodic. So you've got to link all these happenings into something bigger. And hopefully that's where we'll be at come uh, episode chapter. It'll be chapter 20-something, because this is chapter 20, so chapter 24. Hopefully we 
we have a sense of what's happening and what their end game or goal is. So, uh, like I said, like and subscribe if you'd like to. Um, let me know in the comment section what you think so far of season four, no, season three, sorry, season. And, uh, yeah, so a little disappointed with season three so far, but it can only get better from here. So uh, thank you guys, and uh, check out my other videos. Check out my shorts. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back soon with the GoatCast.